flat out as the red lights go off. He tries to go through on the inside. Oh, oh good fire! Tension is incredible. Such a fierce battle, both fighting like gladiators for victory here. Hello everybody, I'm John Hindorf and it's a warm welcome to the final European leg of the 24-inch series powered by Hankook for 2024. This weekend's setting is the legendary circuit of Catalonia Barcelona in the north of Spain. It's always been one of the special events on the Hankook 24-inch series calendar. This time, an anniversary, the 25th edition of the 24 Hours of Barcelona. What a brilliant season of fabulous endurance racing, which started in the desert at Dubai, then to Mugello in Italy, and led via Spa-Francorchamps to Portimao in Portugal, back to Italy for Mizano, and now it's the European showdown here at Barcelona. So it's nice weather conditions here. We have a nice atmosphere here on the pre-grid. So, and we're all looking forward for the 24 hours of Barcelona. This is a truly international event. 160 drivers from 33 countries, 33 teams, 36 cars, 10 different manufacturers all taking part. What a superb grid. This is a multi-class race. The focus on five main classes, GT3, 992, GTX, GT4 and TCE. That gives us plenty of excitement here on the circuit of Catalonia Barcelona. Look at it's just outside the town of Montmelo, about 30 kilometers north from downtown Barcelona. This track opened in September 1991. I mean, this is the this is the best thing you can do endurance racing Barcelona. It's always a great event. I love it. I love it. There is a lot of uh, you know like up and down that I really love. Uh, and which allow us to be also super quick, so which is quite interesting. They've certainly changed the track and made the track so much better. The back corner is so brilliant to drive. It's just, you know, it's, yeah, it's a good track, but it, it's hard. <laughs> it's a fun layout. It's, uh, it's many right corners, so uh, you might start feeling the neck at some point, but uh, I like it. It's a very fluent layout. It's very challenging as well. It's a very technical track, so I think uh, it's one of the best tracks probably uh, to do a 24-hour race. We're at one of the more modern race tracks on the world circuit. It's a bit of everything, really. Long straights, some very technical areas as well. The track map in two dimensions does not do this circuit justice. I know there's a lot of testing here, so the teams sort of know their way around, but the nuances are very important. It's a long start-finish straight, and what you can't see from that track map is the fact you come over a brow into the braking area for turn one. Braking point just about on the edge of the curbing to the left-hand side. Through turn one, you can take plenty of curb through turn two. Sort of want to be towards the middle of the road for turn number three. That's going uphill and you start accelerating to turn four. That seemingly goes on forever and ever. 180 degree right-hander across the top of another brow into a difficult downhill left-hander at turn five and the track falls away from you on the right-hand side. Balance the car through a little kink at six. Don't worry about that, that's flat out. Now, turn seven. Once again, get your turning spot on because you don't want to run too far at the right at turn eight where that yellow sausage curb is. Turn nine, Kamsa at the top of the hill Oh my goodness me, I think this is one of the most difficult circuit corners anywhere in the world. It's over the top of a brow, the camber is not helping you and they're going to be watching for track limits on the exit of that. Now, downhill to turn number 10, which has changed just a little bit. We go a little bit further down the hill and the corner's been opened out, so the minimum corner speed is a little bit higher than it used to be. Climbing the hill again into the amphitheatre section, through turn 11 and 12, kind of make those one longer right-hand corner. Don't turn right too sharply because we're not using the chicane to drive us right here. We're going through turn 13 over another brow and then diving down the hill to New Holland, the final corner, which is now flat out in fourth or fifth gear. A real challenge for all the drivers. 
So that is the 14 corners, 4.6 kilometers, or just under three miles of this track. Let's go qualifying here at the circuit of Catalonia, and this is more than just the position on the starting grid. It's psychological. So get your competitive trousers on because this is the first showdown. Three parts of qualifying, 15 minutes, and every session has to be with a different driver. The best lap from each driver counts, and then we average them out. Best average gets pole position in the class. Qualifying rules and regulations apply for all three sessions. One set of tyres across all three, a pre-calculated amount of fuel, and that's it. No refueling, no changing of the Hankook tyres. That makes it a challenge, especially for the drivers doing the second or third part. 3rd position in GT, the number 14 BMW M4. Two Danish brothers, Christian and Roland Poulsen, with the Swede Alfred Nielsen and the German Jens Klingmann. It's an Audi in 2nd position, the R8 LMS of the Santaloc Junior team. Black and green on the livery, 18 on the door. Fastest in GT, the number 4 McLaren. The basis for their pole position, an outstanding 141.775 in the second qualifying session from Aaron Tielitz. Optimum Motorsport on the front of the grid in the best starting position. Todd did an awesome job in qualifying one. Uh, it's his first time ever in a GT3 car, so really proud of that. Just now, we did a good job just getting in a nice clean gap, so I got one lap of clean air, and uh, that was all we needed. In the always competitive 992 Cup class, the Paul City car will be the number 903 from Red Ant Racing. Their bright red number 903 Porsche, driven in part by brothers Yannick and Ayrton Redon. Fastest in all three of the sessions. In GTX, the KTM Crossport, Team Razoon more than racing from Austria. And in GT4, a 151.304 is the fastest lap time set by the number 405 Team GSR Motorsport, securing their pole position for the dark green Ginetta. Pole position in the TCE class has been taken by the passionate team of JMEC Engineering from the UK. The excitement I get is that being absolutely on the limit in that car on every bit of tarmac all the way around the lap. And it was absolutely on the limit, so it was fantastic. So it's a real good feeling when you get the lap and you still survived and uh, you can celebrate. Saturday is race day number one for the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona. Tense atmosphere, full of excitement on the grid, everyone ready to go. ST Racing back in Creventic GT4 for the first time since they won the title in 2021. I'm so thankful to be here, really looking forward to this opportunity. We've got a great Samantha Tan racing car. The BMW M4 has been fantastic around this racetrack and I can't wait for my first Creventic race to start. Herbeth Motorsports, Ralph Bourne could become a four-time winner at this time tomorrow. Well, I'm happy about all the fans and all the ones who are following us on Instagram and elsewhere. So it's good to be here and I like Barcelona very much. This is the second race over the full contiguous distance of 24 hours. Portimao was the first one earlier in the year. Always important to stay out of trouble at the start. That's the goal, yeah. Obviously, obviously it's a 24-hour race that we're not going to take any risk because we don't want any kind of contact. So let's see, hopefully everybody is in line with us. But sometimes people forget that when they actually get started, they forget about it's actually a 24-hour race, not a one-hour race. So let's see how it goes. But so far, I think we should be good. The other drivers that are here should be pretty reasonable. So it's going to be pretty fun. It's Optimum Motorsport from the UK with their McLaren on pole, Santaloc Junior Team's Audi alongside them. The BMW of Pulsar Motorsport has the AMG alongside it from Hoffer Racing on row two. Row three and making it five different manufacturers in the top five positions, Herbert Motorsport's Porsche and Red Camel by Jutta Racing in their Audi. First time that team of Red Camel have run a GT3 car. E2P and RD Signs making up the top eight. Leading them round to the start of the race, the BMW E36. That's exactly the same as the car that won the first ever Barcelona 24 hours. And now here we are at the 25th edition. Into the pit lane then for that special safety car. 
Optimum Motorsports McLaren right on the hash marks of the grid, waiting for the red lights to go out and start the 24-hour countdown clock. What a great sight in the Spanish sunshine. It's a long hold as they come out of the 14th and final corner. Everyone on their tiptoes looking over the pit wall to see them dash down to turn one, and it's a clean start. McLaren staying over to the right-hand side in the pit wall. Here comes the Audi Santalog Junior team trying to pressure. Look at the BMW, the red and white car from the Paulson team on the inside, trying to make up a position there as the rest of the field stream through. It's a nice, clean start as they head up the hill now towards turn four and that long, long right-hander. Weaving left and right to get some heat into the Hankook tyres. And it's still the pole sitter. That's a good conversion from pole position. Always a difficult choice to know when to go for it. As the red lights go out, you've got to time it perfectly. Bit of a conservative start from Ralph Bourne in the number 91. Herbert Kais dropped back a couple of positions in P7 at the moment. And under pressure from the white and blue, Lant Audi down the inside. That's a bold manoeuvre. Not sure he got quite through there, no. The 91 is still ahead as they go around through Kamsar at the top of the hill at turn nine. But I have a suspicion that it won't be long. Headlamps flashing on the land car in eighth position. Time to climb the hill now and go through turns 11 and 12 as we get towards the completion of the first lap. And wow, what a start it's been from the Optimum Motorsport Paul sitting McLaren. That's a very, very decent gap indeed. Round about a second back to Elia Earhart in the number 18 Audi from Santalog Junior team. Down towards the first corner again as the whole field streams past the main grandstand. Looks like a dive down the inside by the Mulder Motorsport Machine. Yes, it is. And that is for position. The 904 from Red Ant losing a spot there. And it's bright yellow livery this weekend. That is going to be a tough battle all the way through in that 992 Cup class. Mulder Motorsport, one of the teams that participated in the 992 Endurance Cup, the 12 hour event run by. Creventic and Porsche Motorsport just a week ago at Spa. So they've had a lot of work to do to get the cars here and re-prep them for this 24-hour race. On board with the 931, Abdullah Ali Al Khalifi in the QMMF by HRT. Going down to turn number 10. This was another team that was at Spa just six days ago. And they won the AM class in the 992 Endurance much celebrating from them, their first overseas victory outside the region. Samantha Tan BMW in their multicoloured livery, right up the tail end of Matthew George in the Mercedes AMG. That's the Venture Engineering car. That's a debut for that team in the Hankook 24 hour series. Let's go back to the start of the race in the shade of the main grandstand. Good crowd here, and it will be even more this evening. That's the tradition here. One, two, three, four and a half cars across the track as they went down into turn one. Very good start by the front three rows. Very disciplined and respectful as well. I think in the driver's manual, if you look up a perfect multi-class racing start, they should just put a link to that bit of video, to be honest. Back to live racing. And the Herbert Motorsport 911 is side by side with the BMW of Paulson Motorsport. That is for position. Ralph Bourne gently fighting his way back from what? He dropped down to seventh or eighth, didn't he? And now he's back into where he started at P5, across the top of the rise at turn nine. Behind him, that is Tim Vogler in the blue and white Audi, who's gone past Antonio Saniero. Oh, this is drama for Lant. Just after that overtaking manoeuvre, 
he is in the garage. They were expecting to be a front runner, and this looked serious. The tension roller of the generator belt went, and uh, now we have to change the tension roll and uh, fix a new belt, and then hopefully everything works again. So it's, uh, it's damped. We were quite good on our way, but uh, unfortunately that's racing. The Jutta racing car driven by Martin Reiber, fighting his way through the field. Uh, started right at the back of the grid because they had a crash during free practice on Friday and the car had to be rebuilt overnight. Meant they couldn't take part in qualifying, so it started P36. Good to see the number 71, red, white and black Audi back in the race and back now into 10th position. Third place, Hoffa Racing in the Chopard AMG is about to become fourth place as Ralph Bourne, who started slowly, looking after his Hankook tyres, has just gone through. Ah, now, maybe there was an issue for the Hoffa Racing car. It's been losing pace, dropping down, and now it's in the garage. It's been a great first hour for the pole sitting Optimum Motorsport McLaren, 40 seconds up the road from the rest of the field. Smooth and quick in the first 60 minutes for the British team. A very special team in our GT4 class this weekend. Team Africa Le Mans included in its driver lineup two Le Mans winners, Jean Lamas and Emmanuel Ipiro. The team is, um, it's been founded by Greg Mills, who is uh, he's, he's a, he's a gentleman actually who competed in two world karting championship with me in 78 and 79. He put together a group of friends, Jan Lammers, Jerem, Black and Mullen, myself and, and him. The South Africa based team made its international debut in 2016, competing here with a Janetta G55, Joe Bradley with Jerome Black and Mullen. It's actually a really good car. It's uh, very good on tyre wear, so uh, we don't have to change tyres every stint. I think we can even triple stint them quite easily. And I see other GT4 cars struggling with that. So in terms of that, it's really good. It's easy to drive. I just spent more than two hours in the car, but no sweat. So there's no AC in the car, but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And to be with this group of people, uh, we're, we're really enjoying it. The purpose for us is just to get together and do the best we can. Sometimes the harder you fight, the harder you try, the more satisfaction you have if you make it to the end. Nice to see that Chris Pirro is joining his dad in the team. Both of Emanuele's sons are engineers at the very highest level of motorsport, but Chris was always a decent driver in his youth. Robert McGuinness now behind the wheel of the Paul sitting Optimum McLaren. He jumped in after the first stop, which they've just had, and that means that Santalock Junior team have popped into the lead with the number 18 Ravenol Audi. R8 LMS. Well, it's taken us almost three hours, but we do have a full course purple. Code 60, that's the meaning of the purple flags. Everyone has to slow down to 60 kilometers an hour. And the cause of that is the KTM Crossport. The number 714 red and white Milwaukee car has lost the front, or at least it's come off. I don't know if there's been some contact there. Cars just going at 60 kilometers an hour. No overtaking means the Marshals can get onto track safely and make any recoveries required. We've had a clean race up until now. Bad news for the 714 team is damage to the front clamshell. Good news is it's taking a flat tow. All the wheels and Hankook tyres pointing in the right direction. That should be a relatively easy fix to get the car back out onto track. Optimum Racing, Robert McGuinness on the back of the number 90 E2P Racing. That's Alvaro Parent behind the wheel of that car. You can see from the stripe that they are proudly Spanish. The team from Madrid looking to hold on and defend, but going a little wide at turn nine. McGuinness able to put that McLaren pretty much anywhere he wants on the track. He's back up to second now uh, with the... British Optimum team and immediately pulling out a gap on the E2P Porsche with Alvaro Parent behind the wheel. 
Four hours into the Hankook 24 at Barcelona and Optimum Motorsports are really beginning to dominate. They've been in the lead of the race for almost 130 laps now in 992. It's QMMF by HRT. The team from Qatar, remember an AMCLASS team doing a fabulous job. Samantha Tan, ST racing from Canada with the number 428 BMW leading in GT4. The French Vortex V8 team is at the head of the GTX class. The bright orange 701, always easy to spot on the track. And in TCE, it's the BMW M3, number 133, a British team, GMAC Engineering, which includes gamer to real world racer, Jimmy Broadbent. Drama for the home guard portion of a 902, the red and white machine. Slow on the circuit with smoke pouring out of the back of the 911. That does not look good. The car's in the garage, and I think the mechanics have found out what's wrong. We need a new engine. Well, an engine having gone would normally mean the end of racing, but Holmgaard, with more than 20 years of experience in endurance competition, are not giving up. They're just going to put in a completely new engine. Good luck. A huge amount of work is starting right now for these mechanics. 34 land Audi back out on track after its early problems. They are many laps down. Same could be said for Hoffa Racing. They had their problems at the start, but the teams have done great work to get those cars back out on track. The 714 KTM got back out after the nose problem earlier on, but it's another issue. Left rear does not look correct on that car. I am not a tyre engineer, but that's not right, is it? This is going to be more work for the more than Team Razoon mechanics. 714 was leading in the GTX category. P12 overall. Now the Vortex team has nicked the lead at the top of the class. Gilles Courtois behind the wheel and the French team riding high for the moment. The Vortex story is brilliant, really. They've been long time entrants in the Hankook 24 hour series and this, the Vortex version two, if you will, completely built and designed by them with new aerodynamic bodywork for this season. The number 91 Porsche from Herbeth Motorsport has pitted from the lead in GT3. They'll take on some new Hankook tyres. They've already filled up with fuel as they came into the pit lane. Swapping over there, American driver Scott Noble out. Jason Hart getting in as they came in. They had a couple of minutes of a lead over the second place, number 14 BMW. Diana Binks is down there in the pit lane. It's very physical because the track's been changing as it rubbers in and then kind of goes away from us depending on the temperature. So it's quite a challenge. It didn't hurt when I didn't help when I jumped in the car. My knee hit uh, the uh, traction control. And I, I'm like, what is wrong with the car for about four laps? But they finally looked at the dash and told me what to set. It lost my confidence for about six, seven laps, but I got it back going again. The track felt really good by the end. The car feels good. So I think if we just keep the car clean, stay out of trouble, we're going to have a good finish. I think. I don't know where we are, but I think we're doing pretty good in the AMs and fairly good in the overall. So I feel good about where we are, and now they put the faster guys in, so I feel a little bit better about that. Paulson Motorsport from Denmark with the red and white BMW M4 GT3, proudly displaying the 001 and the windscreen of the Lumirank system. It's a strong team, you know. Former world touring car driver, team principal Christian Poulsen has his brother with him. He's got Jens Klingman, German pro driver, BMW works driver. And in the car at the moment, a very special day for the Swede, Alfred Nielsen. He's celebrating his 23rd birthday. In the pit lane, Samantha Tan, the ST of ST Racing, waiting for her stint. Great to have this team and her back in the Hankook 24-hour series. 
this weekend. A fresh driver lineup for the BMW team. Two American drivers, Neil Verhagen, another BMW Works driver, former BMW Junior. John Miller, as well from the States. The Belgian Fabian Defeur and British IndyCar veteran Pippa Mann. She's getting out of the car at the moment as Samantha gets in. ST Racing leading the GT4 class as they came into the pits. Very close in the top three, though. It's a couple of laps between the BMW and the Venture Engineering car and four laps to the Porsche of Line Speed GP. Multiple Indy 500 starter Pippa Man just out of the car in the pit lane. We're very happy with how we're doing so far in the race. Um, we've been working really hard all weekend to preserve the tyre wear in our car. And we finally feel like we're getting to the point where our car's pretty good over an entire stint. And that's a very good feeling from where we started this weekend at. There's a great story developing with uh, Yuta Racing and the number 71 red and white Audi. Remember, they started at the back of the grid and have moved from 36th up to 8th position. Now, Francois Beziak behind the wheel. What a fight back from this team. Worked all night to get this car onto the track. And, oh, my goodness, I've cursed them. Francois just going off at uh, turn five. Nicholas Jonsson doing a great job of missing him as he spun in front of that green Porsche. Jonsson continues, but I'm afraid... It looks like that Audi is stuck in the gravel. Not going to come out of there. This will be another Code 60. Pretty much exactly what Code 60 is for, to be honest. Wait for the tour car to come out. And another look at a masterful piece of driving by Nick Johnson. Decided to go to the right and then had to stop and go to the left as the Audi ran in front of them. The line speed Porsche in there as well. Let's hope that's the last bad look for the Jutta racing team for the weekend. So let's get the tour car there. Yeah, snatch tractor required. And already the rear handcuffs are back on hard standing. That Circle K sponsored car will be back in the race before you know it. In fact, there he goes. So Francois Beziak, I'm sure slightly chastened by that slight mistake but turn five such a difficult corner coming downhill to it and as you come out and want to get on the throttle the right hand side of the circuit just falls away from you and therefore the camber's not helping you and i think that's just what caught him out the netherlands team from baz Coten racing are a real mainstay of the hankook 24-hour series great to see them back here at the 24 hours of barcelona with a 992 Cup car with the number 992 on the door. And that playful livery reflects the Dutch motorway police cars that Porsche provided for them back in the 1970s. That was a 964 Targa, would you believe it? And they used to drive around without the top on. We're running on our toes from Tuesday to Sunday. And uh, so it's not only the race, it's, it's all the sessions. Uh, we're, we're working hard, we're fighting hard with the crew and the drivers to get the most out of it. It's always great to be here and uh, yeah, we would have wanted to be closer to the top steps in, in our class, but uh, yeah, it's going to be difficult. And remember, they did have some difficulties. Around the four-hour mark, the number 992 was off the circuit. Harry Hilda's got the car going again after they'd sideswiped the wall and got it straight back to the garage and the arms of the waiting mechanics. We had an, um, an incident where the car spun into the tire wall, so uh, we had to re replace two coolers and uh, the additional headlights, so it's, it was not only co cosmetic damage, and we lost like 15 to 17 laps. We're in the back of the grid at the moment, but uh, we never give up, never. Hashtag this is endurance. That really is the motto, isn't it? And it is what endurance racing is all about, that never say die attitude. Six hours of racing, Joe Bradley being revitalised in the pit lane. We'll take a look at the standings. In GT, after 200 laps, the Santa Lock Junior team leading ahead of Optimum Motorsport by just 1.3 seconds. Not quite as tight, but still close in the 992 class. The 
903 Porsche from Red Ant Racing, just 50 seconds ahead of the QMMF by HRT machine. It's ST Racing and Samantha Tan's team in the BMW number 428 that leads in GT4. And in TCE, the number 127 Porsche Cayman of SRS Team Zorg Rensport has the top spot at the moment. There's a lot of excitement in the 992 Cup class and a great performance here by QMMF by HRT. We're running the, uh, the, nine, uh, the 992 uh, class car today in the uh, M class at 7 overall. First in M class and uh, first in Pro M, so we're doing really well so far. It's still a long race to come, so we have a strategy to go through the night. Uh, we had a win in Spa, and so we're trying to continue the streak of uh, wins. Uh, the drivers are doing so uh, good. They are uh, working really well with the tire management. HRT is doing an excellent job, so uh, just we have to put our heads down, and then the results are kind of come in. The Spa result last weekend for this team really hit the headlines in the region. Their first overseas victory. Three Cateries and one German driver in the car this weekend. Sun beginning to go down at the far side of the circuits. Visibility will start to become a problem. Still 17 hours to go in this 25th edition of the 24 hours at the circuit Barcelona, Catalonia. No time to relax here. The action continues. Here comes the Optimum Motorsport McLaren. That's Aaron Tielitz behind the wheel. He's putting in a super stint. And that's second place as he's just gone by Roland Paulson in the BMW. So it's Herbeth leading now for Porsche ahead of McLaren and Optimum, Pulsed Motorsport for BMW in third. Coming on to the start-finish straight now. Another little battle on track. The KTM of Milos Pavlovich. Daniel Miller in the line speed, Porsche. Through the final corner onto the main straight into the shadow of the main stand. The sun dropping down very, very quickly here. All the competitors with their lights on. All the KTM defending 18th position on the dirt, but through on the inside, Daniel Miller. And the Porsche moves up one position overall and in class. Yeah, it's just uh, trying to minimize the loss of time when somebody needs to overtake you and, uh, and and go on with it. So for me, it was very difficult at the end because the tires were like 500 kilometers old. But, uh, but the car is working well. The team is doing a good job. And so fingers crossed. The GT4 class leader is in the pits for Samantha Tan Racing. Diana Binks is there. Yeah, unfortunately, we had a nice solid lead in the GT4 class. And over the last hour or so, the drivers in the car were reporting that uh, there was kind of a slow loss of power in a few specific places. Didn't seem to be costing us too much lap time. Uh, and then it just progressively got a little worse and a little worse and a little worse. It's one of these things where these problems don't usually fix themselves. And uh, we got to the point where we had to come in. And the Canadian Samantha Tan Racing BMW going back out, but they have dropped to fifth in class and five laps down on the class leader. I love this part of any 24-hour race when we're into full darkness. And there's a battle going on in the 992 class. Kirby de Bruyke in the 903 is challenging Ibrahim al abdul Ghani in the QMMF by HRT number 931. This is the battle for the lead in class. abdul Ghani defending. I promise they are together in the darkness down towards turn one. But I think the 903's gone through. Yes, it has. This is like an extended Porsche Cup race. Side by side, the red ant car on the inside. And Abdul Ghani's gone back through after a little moment. De Bruyke still will not give it up. Can he make this stick this time? Abdul Ghani on the outside. De Bruyke on the inside has the preferred line, and this time he does take the position. Down towards turn number five, and confirmation that the red ant car is leading. 
from the purple machine of QMMF. What a battle this has been. And remember that QMMF car is in the AM part of 992. Luke Breukers is behind the wheel of the Audi GT3 R8 for the Dutch team Red Camel by Jutta Racing. First time that the family have raced together in a GT3 car and they're doing very nicely indeed. Fourth position at the moment, but Luke is having to defend very hard because right behind him, the next set of headlights are that of the BMW of Pulsar Motorsport and BMW works driver Jens Klingman is at the wheel. Absolutely nothing in it as they head towards turn four. The long right-hander. This is great driving by Luke. Goes a little bit wide, but that's fine. He'll swing back across to the right-hand side of the road up to Seat, which is the downhill. Left-hander, does he go a little bit wide there? I'm not sure. Klingman looks like he's got a wee bit more grip at the moment. Marvellous stuff. Remember, that is a BMW Works driver behind Luke Breukers. Great stuff from the young Dutchman. We can all see how hard he's working to defend that fourth position. Ten hours into the Hankook 24 hours of Barcelona and Herbeth Motorsport have a handy 1 minute 25 second lead over Optima Motorsport in second in the McLaren. Then two Audi teams, but they're not on the lead lap. Santaloc Junior Team and Red Camel by Jutta Racing still ahead of Poulsen Motorsport's BMW. That's been a great battle. E2P, the Jutta Racing Car 71 from the back of the grid now in seventh and Red Ant Racing lead the 992 class in eighth overall. Complete darkness around the track. Even more concentration and focus needed now. You can't really see. You have to memorise the lines. The GT3 seem a bit more kind of aggressive. Just under 11 and a half hours at this time of year between sunset and sunrise. It's going to be a long night of darkness. Hola. Here, bienvenidos. A una hermosa mañana de domingo, or oh, good morning, and welcome to a beautiful Sunday here at the Circuit of Catalonia. Another great day of racing ahead of us. Five hours still to go. Let's catch up on the overnight action. Herbeth Motorsport and Santaloc Junior team have been trading the top spot, but it's Herbeth Motorsport with an almost five lap advantage this morning in the 992 class. The tension is still palpable QMMF by HRT two laps ahead of Red Ant Racing in GTX the 701 Vortex has a 50 lap lead or thereabouts and the sister car the 702 is in second the GT4 top spot back in the hands of the number 428 Samantha Tam Racing since about 6.30 this morning that's been an incredible drive back Nothing has changed in TCE. It's SRS Team Zorg Rensport leading their class with a gap of now 43 laps. Sounds simple, but it certainly isn't, as Benito Tegel tells us. For the most part, taking care of the rear view mirrors and, of course, having a reference on any other lights that come in, in the circuit, like uh, those poles and even the, the lights with a position number in the windshield will give you a hard time because sometimes it's blinking you don't know if it's a GT3 fastest car or something. So uh, just trying to position myself and navigating in between the, uh, the traffic, really. Now we're enjoying a beautiful Sunday, but it hasn't started well for the Paul sitting McLaren. An incident with the number 424 and a spin by Todd Coleman after contact with the Lion Speed car. They've dropped out of the top three the McLaren had a throttle problem during the night and lost around about 20 minutes in the pits. Undoubted disappointment for the British McLaren crew as they clearly have a very good car with good pace here. Number 91, Porsche from Herbeth Motorsport into the pits from the lead. It's Jason Hart getting out, Ralph Bourne getting in. Brilliant night session for them, wasn't it? No mistakes. A good, solid race from the team that we expect to do good, solid races with. Let's go down to Jason Hart in the pits. 
It's quite challenging. This track, uh, the evolution and change is so much from the sun yesterday to the night and then now to the morning. Uh, I would say that it's a low grip track in my experience. Uh, and so the tire dig is quite high and then the car starts sliding around quite quickly. So you have to start with the car set up over here and it ends up over here by the end. Um, so it's, it's fun though. When, when things are changing like that, it's enjoyable as a driver because it's a challenge. Another team who had a good overnight session, Hofer Racing. Technical issue early on, but they've fought their way back. It was directly my first stint where we had a failure on the rear suspension. Uh, we lost nearly 12 laps. Uh, we were down to 36. And now we could um, battle back in the night. Uh, now we are six overall and second in class. These guys, they are just amazing. They did such a great job. Um, I'm really proud. Well, this was supposed to be a standard pit stop for the fourth placed Audi from Red Camel powered by Jutta, well they're powered by manpower at the moment, not Audi V10. Luke Broig is getting in, his brother Rick is getting out. The problem is the car won't start, so they're going to have to do an old-fashioned bump start in the pit lane. Not even sure how you do that with a paddle shift car. Let's hope they can get it going. They've been going very well. Yes, it's restarted and they're back in the race. ST Racing in their BMW M4 GT4 dropped down to 15 class, five laps down on the lead in the late evening because of a repair. They're back to the top again now. There was a stone that went through our intercooler and we've essentially lost all of our coolant. We had no power and it was just slowly dwindling and dwindling and then we had to bring the car in to fix it. It took about 20 minutes, but yeah, over the course of the night we were able to slowly claw our way back up. The top of the GT4 class has been a real battle of attrition. Line Speed GP were leading. The German team with the Porsche 718 Cayman have not been up to pace for a little while now, and they are dropping back. The car was great. Uh, the tires held up really well today. The grip is great. Uh, I think we had a really good, uh, really good 24 or 22 hours so far. Uh, we just had a stupid little technical problem with one of our lights, and uh, we lost about eight minutes in the pits, and that made the difference from P1 to P3. Does nobody want to win this GT4 class? We are under one hour to go, and Samantha Tan, who's just taken over the BMW, that is her outlap, and she's not moving. Keep an eye open for the BMW coming through. It's already gone past once and got on the lead lap. Okay, Sam's moving again. But this is absolutely desperate for the 428 team. So close to the end of the race. What a topsy-turvy class. Pepperman and the rest of the ST racing team in the garage, biting their fingernails, watching the timing screens, watching the picture. They are trying to work out where Matthew George is in the AMG. He's only about half a lap down now. Back onto the lead lap in GT4. Well, we've got ourselves a real grandstand finish here. George will have been told on the team radio to get his foot down. That BMW is not moving quick enough. It looks like Samantha is struggling again. She's wiggling left and right, coming out of turn nine, trying to get the fuel flow. They've just come out of the pits. They've got fuel in the car. Keep an eye open for the Mercedes. Oh my goodness. What drama we have here. The Canadian team, it's running, it's running again. No, now it's not. Incredible drama. And stopped on the front straight. Samantha Tan has come to a halt. This surely is going to cost them the lead of the race in GT4. Neil Verhagen, John Miller, the rest of the team, they've worked so hard. Here comes the EMG. They're both on the front straight now. The next car back from Samantha Tan is Matthew George, and this is for the win in GT4. Down towards the first corner. I don't know what Samantha's done. She's probably pressed every button on the interior of that car. That almost looks up to speed. Has she got anything with which to defend this lead? Round the outside from George on turn number three. He'll accelerate away 
from the Canadian Shirley. She's fighting though, stays right on the rear wing of that AMG. The car's running fine again. Oh, motor racing. You couldn't write this script. Fred Shandoff now behind the wheel of the Paul sitting McLaren from Optimum. Not been a great night for them. Lost some time in the pits, but that number four car now just one lap behind a position on the podium. They're chasing the BMW of Paulson Motorsport inside the last hour of racing. Oh, the McLaren's gone dead stick. Lights off on that car. That normally means no power. Oh, and they refire again. I'm not sure my heart can take this. And it's slowing down. The fourth place overall car. The fastest car in qualifying by some margin. Fred Shandoff, is he going to have to stop and do a reset here as he's coming to turn number four? It's slightly uphill there. He won't get back to the pits there if he has to course. There's too many uphill parts. Oh, he is absolutely gutted. Frustration from Fred in the car. Disappointment for the team. That car, I don't think, is going to refire. He'll be running through all of the processes guided by the team disappointment for them it's going to need a tour to get that back but i'm afraid the chase for third is just about over let's go down to the pit lane jamie wall from the team sure we've just lost fuel pressure basically so it's fuel pumps uh is what it's looking like unfortunately uh so yeah there's not a lot we can do we have a reset inside the car which we tried to do uh, Fred tried to recycle a car, but nothing, unfortunately. But I can't, you know, thank the team enough. You know, they've done such an amazing job. Keep the car going. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's motor racing, as we well know. We'll, we'll fight some more days in the future, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just frustrating. Remember earlier in the race, the 902 red and white Porsche smoking badly diagnosed as an engine failure. So what did the Danish team Holmgaard Motorsport do? They found themselves a new engine, took the old one out, put the new one in, and they're now eighth in 992. Can you believe it? The Spirit of the Race Award to Kim Holmgaard and his team. Uh, we didn't have anything else in our mind. <laughs> the only thing is our mind was, OK, let's get the, uh, this one out and get another one in. We were, we were never thinking about giving up. A brilliant achievement from the Danes. Last few minutes of the race. Let's take a look at the class leaders. It's been a thrilling fight with QMMF by HRT, but it will be the 903 of Red Ant topping the 992 class, and that will give Red Ant its second 992 teams title in the Hankook 24H series. In TCE, it's been a while since Team Zorg Rensport have been on the top step last year at the Hankook 12 Hours of Spa, but they'll take the big trophy here. Double win for Vortex V8, their fourth class win of the season, and they'll take the GTX team's title with the results here at Barcelona, despite a loss of power that brought the 701 to a stop late on here. Debutants Venture Engineering took the chequered flag ahead of 2021 overall GT Teams champion ST Racing by just a second after 24 hours. Oh, I just can't believe that just happened. What a fight. I mean, we didn't have the pace of the BMW. Obviously, the BMW had its problems. We had ours during the night. What an amazing race. Herbeth Motorsport with the number 91 black and gold Porsche have given Scott Noble the honour of bringing that car to the end of the 25th running of the 24 hours of Barcelona. He's on the front straight. The chequered flag is out. What a race they've put together. Team Herbeth win with Scott, Ralph Bourne, Jason Hart and Justin Blattner. They extend the distance record from 725 last year to 738 this year. Ralph Bourne becoming the second four-time overall event winner. Joe Bradley is on the pit wall with the German. Yes, we had a very strong season. Uh, didn't make so much mistakes. Had a very, very good car, as usual, uh, from the Herbert team. And 
as it is usual, I like to say thank you very much to all the ones preparing the car for us. And uh, this is a basis uh, together with a strong lineup. Uh, this is a basis for success. Well, we have to have a word with Jason Hart as well. He's down with Joe on the wall. Wonderful journey. Uh, Scott's first year in GT3 cars. My first year doing a full season of Carventic. And uh, we, we just love it. I mean, it's just a wonderful place to race. The, the whole organization, you guys, uh, all the teams, all the drivers, just absolutely wonderful. After a drama-filled Hankook 24 hours of Barcelona for the Trofeo Fermi Vélez, it's Herbert Motorsport who are the overall winner that will secure them the GT3 Pro-Am class title. Santaloc Junior team second, Pulsan Motorsport in third. That's their first overall podium since they came back to the Hankook 24H series in 2022. Red Camel by Jutta Racing, fourth place for their first time in GT3, just ahead of Hoffer in fifth. What a comeback by that team. The team from Belgium, Red Ant Racing in sixth place. They win the 992 class. Paul sitting Optimum Motorsports McLaren, after a late drama, our seventh ahead of QMMF by HRT in the top eight and winning the 992 AM class. On top of the overall podium, the newly crowned GT3 team's champion, Herbert Motorsport, but every team has done well. And now time to spray the carver. The checkered flag of the Hankook 24 hours of Barcelona brings to a close the highly successful 12-year partnership between Hankook Tyres and the promoter Kravendik. So this is the last event of the Hankook 24-hour series, and the multinational tyre developer will take its bow. Michelin takes over in 2025. What great endurance racing this year. We'll see you in Dubai. Ready to go flat out as the red lights go off. Tries to go through on the inside. Oh, we've got fire! Tension is incredible. Such a fierce battle. Both fighting like gladiators for victory here. 